What I love about puppetry is that it can tell a story in a unique way and people are very uh, engaged in a different way sometimes than when an actor is telling a story. So this is why children tell their, you know, if children has a traumatic event, they can speak through a puppet things they can't say through their own voice. So the puppets become a vehicle, a very mysterious vehicle for telling story. And the mystery of this show many times works very well as told through puppetry. Plus, I'm a sculptor, I love visual design, and I love movement, that's why I love capoeira. So puppetry is visual design and movement together. It has, and it's been very well received throughout the theater world from different shows I've done with Disney, The Lion King, and, and uh, puppetry is for adults and children alike. It seems to be something that people can relate to without even explaining why. Cirque du Soleil is about the human spirit, the human acrobat, and I only cover them as much as possible to convey what I want, but I never take away the energy of the performer. We're known for always exposing the face and showing the body. Um, and I don't, I don't do puppets where you hide in a box. I never have done that. For me, it's about extending the energy of the human body. We play with surrealism, and Cirque du Soleil is very well known for it. That's taking your expectation of what something is and twisting it, turning it on its head, turning it upside down. And, so, and also the bunny, of course, is a magician's theme. So if you look at some of the things we dealt with, uh, clocks and rabbits and uh, handkerchiefs and boxes, you know, we take the tools of the trade and then we twist them. We make them strange. So by making a bunny six feet tall, it already is strange, but still very cute. There's an exhibit that's been very popular around the world called the Bodies Exhibit. They strip the skin away. And I, I of course, wanted it to be gory. He's been electrocuted and he's savaged by the, the rabbits and I don't even do gory very much and it was hard for me to do that but it has the effect I wanted it to because uh, Chris is so beautiful he really is a beautiful man and I wanted to strip away all the cosmetic beauty and show the, the reality of, uh, of, of the core of his, uh, of, his, of his being. I do a lot of carnival oriented work um, I'm asked many times to sort of reproduce the energy of Carnival, so I, I want to do some more study. In Las Vegas, people come here to lose their inhibitions, have fun, and it's beauty. Everywhere you look is beauty. Everything's bigger, grander, golder, more of. And so I don't even have to just invite you saying, come and see if you like it. Come because you're going to like it. Little New York and little Las Vegas, it even feels colder right it now. It is colder. They have a big fan over here that makes it colder. <laughs> that's, that's her theory. The amazing Jonathan is a comedian. In no way, shape, or form can he do street magic. But he wanted to share his form of street magic with me. Johnny, well, hey, how do you do it? You find a no, stick? I'm gonna make the dog levitate. What are do you doing? You can't do no, this. We're just gonna fling you him up really high. No, we'll cut you into can't. the shot where the dog's flying through the air. They're gonna just like real tight. You, you can't hurt the dog, Jonathan. Listen, you do this all the time. Don't do One, this. I, I can't watch this. Two, I can't watch this. Three. Okay. I can't I can't I'm, I'm sorry. Dog. He's a mean, mean man. I'm sorry, I'll save you. You're sick. You know what that's made out of? Dog. It's fake. It's dog. It's fake. It's kind of funny to be living here right below the Luxor Light because I recall literally, Mom, what was that, like 10 years ago? I first came to Las Vegas, looked to the left as I was driving down in my little rental car, saw the light, said, one day I want to float in that light, and now I live right under that light. What's great about living at the Luxor is that my cars, my bikes, everything is there on display. So when I come up with an idea, I could jump right into the parking lot and try it. I asked you all to congregate here because I wanted to get in a situation with impossible conditions. There's nothing above, nothing below, obviously. What I'm gonna ask is just a couple people, come on. I want you to take a walk around the bike, check out the floor, feel the weight of this bike. This is a 600 pound 
bad boy. Where's the girls? Here's my girls. <laughs> Here in Las Vegas. There's a million show girls. I get Jason and Raul. Cover her up. Watch, this is gonna be insane. But I want you to notice the beautiful curves. rolling on a motorcycle, but this is better. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Take care, folks. or an illusionist? I, uh, I do a little bit of everything. I do mentalism, I do illusions, I do magic, uh, escapes, but at the so end of the day... you don't label yourself? No, I don't. I'm an artist that uses a lot of different paintbrushes to, to create an image. But at the end of the day, I think the most important thing is to have an emotional connection with the audience. That's what Houdini did. You know, that's why people still talk about Houdini more than anybody. He's still synonymous with the art. And uh, that's pretty impressive, considering he wasn't on television.